14. Woo! Go Bots! Woo! And the best. <laughs> you are going to be glad. <laughs> we're uh, we're going to need a moment to set up, so uh, bear with us for just a moment. I have to turn the computer the right way. It's been a long convention. Oh my god, I think they, they got it wrong twice. <laughs> And I get to drive home. <laughs> Not until we load out the booth. Everybody got their right name tags? Good. Well, while Matt's queuing it up, I will have a little fun and do some introductions. So, uh, welcome to the GoBots panel. Give yourself a hand for still being here and for being here and loving the show. We're going to have some fun today. I'm going to go from the far left, or my far left. Uh, one of the story editors for the show wrote 22 episodes, I'm fairly certain. Uh, a voice director extraordinaire, producer, writer of all things animation these days, uh, has uh, some relative fame as a live action actor in the old days of Grease and The Boy in the Plastic Bubble. And such, I, I'm avidly reading. In fact, he's going to recreate something for he did his butt suit ward any minute. No, okay. Uh, <laughs> say hi to Kelly Ward. Yeah, read your IMDb page, just something else. The variety of what Kelly's touch is amazing. Speaking oh, of. Also, Fightor. That's right. Where are you, Fightor? Yes, I, I voiced Fightor in this. Give it up for fight hard! <laughs> who, who was a fighter, right? I, I think he was. Yeah. yeah. Appropriately named. The man virtually responsible for everything you've ever seen in the Batcave for the last 20 years. Uh, a story editor on GoBots, uh, Johnny Quest. Uh, written more than you could ever believe, and a lot of the words that are said on screen by other people have been fixed by him in ways that make you laugh or cry or get really, really excited. Alan Burnett. <laughs> These guys here, Matt Patterson and D.W. Ferranti, are the voices along with George Felton. George Feltonstein. I don't know why I went there for a second. Of the Warner Archive podcast. Raise your hand, clap if you listen to Warner Archive. One, one of you. There we go, there's the four. And away. Come find us at the booth. And making his first ever con appearance, the voice of Leader One himself, Lou Richards. You have not been forgotten. <laughs> Not by us, at least. No, gosh, no. Are you, uh, are you uh, technologically... Uh, yeah, I think we're ready to go. We're just going to start the panel off with a little flashback to the introduction to the GoBots. Now, the lyrics to that, uh, who is responsible for writing those? <laughs> I would be willing to bet you it was Bill Hanna. All right, yeah, the GoBots. I think he left the t let the team down. Um, we were just watching Beware uh, the Batman, and the lyrics to that were Beware, 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 Beware the Bat, and these are, you know, so it's a, not, not a lot has changed in some ways. Uh, but <clears throat> the GoBots are part, of, when people think of the GoBots, they also think of the Transformers. Who? Let's, let's just get that right out, because maybe one would not have existed without the other. And the point of this panel is that there was a great war in the mid 80s and that war was the war of the transforming robots. Dan, did you, oh, you, I thought you had something that you wanted Honestly, to say. Just, you're probably heading there, so. No, no, you head there. Okay, well, just to make matters clear, you know, the GoBots were first people. Yeah. These are the original transforming robots. I had people coming by the booth saying things like the Transformers ripoff. No, no, no. The ripoff is the Transformers. But let's just get it straight. First, first there were the toys, and the toys came from Japan, and then two different toy companies were like, hey, I bet these will sell in the US, you know, because there were some other Japanese toys that were coming in. And 
they each company once they got the rights they turned to different uh, story and story teams to develop a narrative around the robots. So the robots came first, oh, and there's my free Wi-Fi. <laughs> um, the robots came first, and then the stories came later. So when you guys got the toys and stuff, there, there already was an outline for a few of the characters and stuff. How did you approach that? How did you guys decide to flesh that out? Well, there were, initially they did uh, a five-part miniseries, and that's what I worked on. And uh, uh, they, they showed us these toys, and they were, they were great toys. I, I think they were spectacular toys at the time. And uh, they wanted to do a show. And they wanted, and, and you know, when you do these kinds of shows, you sort of, uh, you sort of anticipate a lot of the, the toy people telling you, well, we have to show this and we have to show that. And I, I don't remember any of that in this show. I just remember them saying, okay, here's our good guys, and here's our bad guys, and you guys choose who you would like to to have on this show, and we'd like at least this many characters on it, and we have this big giant dragon thing called Zod, and we want to feature that, and we have this um, this uh, uh, vehicle that every, all the good go-butts were on. And, um, and I was anticipating, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, interference by the toy company, but we never got that. And, uh, and it, it went pretty smoothly. There were three people who wrote on it. I wrote on it, and I was story editing, and, and Jeff Siegel was story editing. And he later on would become uh, president of Universal Cartoons, and then um, uh, Tom Ruger. And Tom Ruger would, would later on become uh, create uh, Tiny Toons and, Anim and Anim Animaniacs. And we had a, I remember that we had a really smooth time on it. I just it was all good. And it, and uh, and and Hanna Barbera sort of. I thought, up, I've been through Super Friends, so I thought they, they upped the ante on the animation on this thing, and, and it was, we had a good time. And, and the we, first five did uh, fairly well, and then that followed with a series order of 60. Right, which went to this guy. And were, were you guys aware of the other property coming, or not? I, I was aware of Transformers. Yeah, I was, but I don't know why, because I think I saw it after our show. Well, I just want to show very quickly, this is a news clip that I pulled from the time, which uh, was done by a local station in New York City where they went into F.A.O. Schwartz, and uh, it's titled The Robot Wars, and in the 80s, they really knew how to cover pop culture. <laughs> <laughs> Almost as well as I know how to cue up a video. My store owners are having a hard time keeping up with the incredible demand. We're selling so well we can never keep them in stock. Uh, both items we get about a thousand requests a day. And whenever we do get stock, we're sold out within two or three days, and it's another five or six weeks before we're able to get them in again. The sales manager of New York City's largest toy store is talking about the toy industry's newest craze, GoBots and Transformers, which are a cross between small die-cast vehicles, which have been a favorite of kids for generations, and space-age robots, which can assume a variety of shapes and forms. What's particularly desirable about such a toy? The shapes that you can make. Well, what shapes can you make? You can make them into anything you want. It's clever the way it's, it transforms from one thing That's to another. not the violinist. And it's pretty authentic, too. It makes some weird shapes. That makes your imagination run away. For some, although the imagination ran away, the fingers couldn't follow. I saw them on TV once. They seemed easier on TV. <laughs> I have no idea what I'm doing. How about you? Can you figure it out? No, I'm somewhere between a, a truck and I don't know what. GoBots and Transformers are manufactured by two rival toy companies. Tonka Toys GoBots came out first, then came Transformers by Hasbro Industries. Depending on their size, the toys range in price from $6 to $35. Both have command centers and comic books which explain how the creatures came to Earth and which are the good guys and which are the bad. The GoBots command center, which was all the small GoBots, can convert from a rolling to a walking to a standing vehicle. And the cafeteria, the halves of the body, 
You have a command center. You have a jail for enemy go-bots. You have a cafeteria for good go-bots to get recharged. This transformer switches from tape recorder to Decepticon communicator and back again, while the cassette itself becomes a bird. Cabbage Patch was last year's phenomenon for girls. Transformers will be this year's phenomenon for boys. Last year, Coleco Industries, which manufactured the hot-selling item Cabbage Patch dolls, rang up orders totaling $60 million. But this year, the toy industry says, GoBots and Transformers will give those dolls a run for their money. Both companies say they've already had orders totaling more than $100 million. For the Independent News, this is Christy Wicker in New York City. I wonder whatever the regular old train sets. Um, so, if you are a fan, you know, this was the great robot war, and if, even if you are a Transformers fan, and there are many, uh, you should know about the GoBots because, what, you know, that's like, uh, let's say if you're studying the situation in the Ukraine today, right? <laughs> There's this guy Putin, right? Okay? Now, how can you understand where he comes from if you don't understand the Cold War? Uh, same thing for robots. <laughs> so, getting back to... So this, this is why you should be listening to the Warner Archive podcast. It's got relevant I have people. a unified Hanna-Barbera timeline theory. Oh, anyway, wow. um, a, yes. so the transition, you worked on the miniseries, and then yes. clearly it was a success, and it got picked up 60 episode order. So then, how did you find yourself in the mix, and what was your start? Oh, uh, well, that's a good question. Um, I have been writing with Jeff Siegel um, uh, spec screenplays, and a position at Hanna-Barbera opened up by virtue of the fact that this order had come about to do 60 of these things in a ridiculously short period of time. And um, How ridiculous? Well, we were, it, it was about four months that we produced <gasps> 60 scripts and 60 storyboards. With, with a robot army, right? <laughs> no, there were two of us. Alan had gone on another show. Alan had gone on to another show. Uh, I was brought in as an associate story editor. He was smart. <laughs> And um, and our our goal was we started uh, four four scripts a week. We went to script on four previous scripts that, that, that had been approved the previous week, and so forth. And then the final scripts went to storyboard, and it just kind of rolled like a. So, so you personally were writing like two scripts a week. Well, we weren't writing per se. We had okay. a phalanx of writers. We had about two and a half dozen writers. Okay. So you were managing. And there were there were people names that, that you know. Uh, uh, Mark Zaslov wrote on the show. Mm -hmm. uh, John Roy, who's a who's a well known animation name. Uh, Eric Lee Wald wrote on the show. They cut their teeth on this, this show. We, we, we All did three a, of those, right? We did a podcast with Don Glute. I know he did. A Don Glute wrote a lot. He was one of our go to guys. Uh, Gina Bacar is another name. Tony Zalewski is another name. Right. Uh, Doug. Uh, booth. They were, they were all the robot players. warriors. They were all robot warriors and they all earned the Purple Heart. So, so yeah. 60 episodes, um, how long did you give the uh, vocal cast to record that many half hours? I, I'm not really sure. I think we did two episodes a week. Something like that. I'm not, is that about right? No? I think our workload is... Uh, I think just, like, just like the Simpsons a week. schedule. And we recorded ensemble. Um, everybody that was on the yeah. audio track was recorded together, led ah, by that's the uh, uh, Casting, though. Yeah. We, we do have the, the main man from the cast that's right, right in the middle. Leader one. Yeah. Um, you, 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 you were starting to tell me a story in the hall, but uh, uh, Lou, how did you get cast? Well, uh, as I remember, I think you were going to tell me differently, but uh, I, might. I was you know, a working actor guy, and I was taking an improv comedy class with Gary Austin, who founded The Groundlings. Mm -hmm. And he left The Groundlings, went over to a theater on Vermont called The Cellar Theater. I don't think it's there anymore. Anyway, I went over there, taking an improv comedy with, with Gary, and I wasn't very good at it. And I got up one evening to do a silly character called Vegetable Man, and this is the way I remember it. And it was just a goofy character, produce worker by day, vegetable man by night. 
I look up in the sky, it's a bird, it's a plane. No, it's a plane. I didn't know how to fly. <laughs> uh, anyway, got up, did the silly character. We had a gal in the class by the name of Helen Hunt. And this is pre Mad About You, pre Oscar. And her dad, Gordon Hunt, used to come to class occasionally. And uh, he would get up and occasionally do improv with us. And he saw me do Vegetable Man, goofy, silly character, and he had me in the read for the GoBots. This is the way I remember it. The, the stalwart leader. <laughs> yes, and I'd never done cartoons, never done it. I was, you know, television actor guy, and I thought, gosh, what do I do? So I just did Vegetable Man, and he became leader one. <laughs> That's 80% accurate. Is it? It's 80%? At yeah. dinner on Friday night, Andrea Romano revealed to me that you were so strikingly handsome in the uh, audition that she begged uh, uh, <laughs> 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 Mr. Hunt to cast you. <laughs> and in middle, she has a crush on you to this day. <laughs> Leader one was cast seen. for his looks. <laughs> well, he was a good-looking robot. <laughs> um, wait, I, I was going to get to this later, but I found some Tumblr accounts that have, like, crush on me. <laughs> <laughs> and I love his beautiful face. He's so happy. This is from the Tumblr account of Lady Gobot. <laughs> I was brought up here to be mocked. <laughs> no, 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 no. Look. I, I love this so much. You you still have fans. Yes. I mean, it's still strikingly handsome. Yeah, that's that's wonderful. What a, I'm so glad I had that ready to go. And, and you know what? When we recorded, I used to stand like that. Oh. Um, I found some other essays like why I love the GoBots more than Transformers. You can find these on our Tumblr blog. Uh, there, there's just some great stuff. Some good commercials. We there. <laughs> hey, do you want this as your wallpaper? Do you want this? Please, for your please your email phone? it to me. Yes, I must have it. Um, all right. Well, we can go back to some videos. Um, I I want to start out by showing some clips from if, if they appear. Uh, We're a very technically savvy group. Oh, quick here. time player. Here I go. I must have. Let me. Let's see. What, what, I, what was I playing recently? Uh, let's the see, all clip. the other panels. Oh, GoBots and Johnny Quest, where'd you go? You want to see some... Uh, all right, you guys talk while I find her. Well, um, you know, in, in getting ready for this panel, we did discover some interesting things online, which I sort of wanted to thread Alan and Kelly that they may not be aware of, but there is uh, a sizable amount of people in the online cartoon fan community who laud GoBots from a feminist viewpoint. It's like the show has much stronger female characters, both human and robot, whereas Transformers just treats women as candy, you know, uh, just background window dressing. Crasher specifically is the character, She, we will see her, she just laughs evilly and enjoys all acts of evil. <laughs> and um, you can find that actually on Tumblr and other blogs of w women going through it and they're like, ah, oh, the, the girls in the Transformer are like girls, but the women in GoBots, <laughs> they have a commanding presence and lead. Also, Psycho... He's really, I mean, as leader one, you're a little bit more of a reactive character because Cycle has some emotional issues that he needs to work out. And now we're just, we've remastered, completely remastered, now 35 of the episodes. We're, we've already got the first five released in a mini series, and the next 30 are going to be coming out in a, in a few months. There's a pre order right now up on our shop. Uh, and within this, I just see you tirelessly being annoyed by Psych Hill, and then we learn something later on in the series in the episode Ed to Psych Hill, where he was your friend and he betrays you. How did you feel about that emotion? Because <laughs> you guys were got you both guardians of, of Gobatron, and like you guys were pals, and he was like, you know, this is there was a Roman history nut in the writing staff. And, I, and we'll get, when, we, when we come back from the time travel episode where they go back and mess with the Roman Republic, uh, perhaps we will uh, talk a little bit more about that. Let's just take in a little bit of the GoBots right now and the magic that they are. <laughs> That's a tour de force. Uh, just by the way, it actually comes out May 6th. 
Oh, the the not not 217 BC, and I don't think that cycle actually managed to go back in time. So, but that's the DVD release. So, who was into Roman history? And that would have been Jeff Siegel. Uh, he was quite a Romanophile. Yeah. It's it's so awesome to see that through it. It was always quite a surprise for me throughout the series. I'm like, yeah, that's yeah, that, that's when I would send them back. 217. <laughs> that's about right. <laughs> The Roman arena wasn't quite as, you know, developed at that point, but I'm going to let that pass because they're transforming robots. <laughs> and transforming children into history buffs. There you go. Um, now I want to show uh, one other quick clip before we talk about this. Uh, this is a later episode where um, Psycho gets a hold of a shrinking ray, which happens in so many cartoons, <laughs> but... The great part about this is when you apply a shrinking ray to a gobot, you get a surprise. <laughs> if my toys came alive when I was a kid like that, I would have pooped myself for three days. <laughs> I think that was before Indian in the Cupboard, by the way. Oh my oh, gosh. That that was amazing. I, I was fascinated that he had a GoBots poster in his room. So in the yeah. world of the GoBots, the GoBots are so famous they've inspired their own toy line. Mm. <laughs> yes, indeed. I mean, like that. It's that kind of imagination that that gets into it and permeates the series, which is where I, you know, kind of fell in love with them all over again. And you know. Uh, it's, it's just like, it, I mean, it's the details like that, because that's, that's like every, I mean, you know, that's every kid's fantasy, that he, and, and you know, I probably reenacted, I probably reenacted that battle as a kid uh, several times myself, but not nearly as cool, and my mom would have killed me if I did that to the vacuum. <laughs> <laughs> so as, as leader one, you know, did you like, did you come up with these plans in your spare time? <laughs> No, that was Kelly's job. <laughs> he, he did that. He, he wrote those words. I said those words. You said them well. Uh, yes. I, and I got to tell you, I don't... <laughs> the fun thing about doing the GoBots was going into the booth and seeing some of the great TV character actors that I had grown up watching. Um, right. William Shallard played Patty Duke's oh, yeah. dad. Oh, yeah. Um, still, Jonathan he's still Harris. doing voices lately. I know he is. Uh, Jonathan Harris from Lost in Space played Dr. Smith, and I'm sitting in the booth with these guys. I grew up with them, and I, I was just in awe half of the time. The, the actors that you guys would bring in. Yeah, and, and terrific cast. Yeah, it was so much fun. No, and, I'm, and it's really fascinating to find out that you guys shot it ensemble, because it kind of, it, it plays in the scenes. I mean, these are, you guys are acting with each other mm -hmm. as opposed to in a booth alone. Yeah, we were all, all now you do it Separately, right? Yeah, there's a lot of single mic work now because people get so busy it's hard to reconcile different schedules. To get everybody together in one room is very, very difficult, very rare. And certainly on a show like this, where we'd have sometimes 16 people in the room. And wow. It, and it would, be, it would be Phil Hartman, Dick Godier, yeah. Lou, uh, Jonathan Harris, Marilyn, Marilyn Lightstone, uh, Brock Peters. Too. Brock Peters. We, Really high, high, high end um, acting talent. I, I do a bad impression of Frank Welker, which I'd like to perform for Leader One right now. Hold me, Leader One. I'm not doing very well. Scooter, we've got problems to solve. Come on. Hey, then we have a universe to save. Oh, okay, let's go. Okay, come on. <laughs> Another episode uh, I found very amusing was because Scooter gets a lot of flack from the fans, uh, but uh, that of course, he, I, I kind of see him as like, you know, from the Island of Misfit Toys a little bit, you know, like, uh, and he, he has a holographic projector, but me, meanwhile, there was one episode where he felt like he wasn't contributing to the fighting so much, so he, he changed out his... Uh, holographic projector for a weapon, and he didn't do so well with that, and then, you know, he, he had to be true to himself, thus resetting the episode so you could see them in any order. <laughs> that was planned, right? Yes. Yes, we'd seen this far into the future, and we knew that that would be necessary. <laughs> um, well, speaking of, like, fan reaction, 
There are still many, many fans who still love the GoBots quite a bit. Uh, on social media, they're probably some of the most active uh, fans, and they created a hashtag, M-O-A-R, GoBots, more GoBots, because after we released the first five, they wanted uh, the rest. Immediately. Immediately. And it's taken this long because uh, we had to go back to the original um, IP to uh, scan them. I mean, we actually put a lot of detail and attention into restoring the GoBots. Yeah, I mean, it's completely remastered. The GoBots probably look better now than they did over the air originally. <laughs> but it takes time, and the fans meanwhile were like, Where are my GoBots? More GoBots! <laughs> um, but we love them. Very much. I just wanted to show a few clips uh, from some, these are kind of fan videos or tributes to the Robot Wars. <laughs> that was on the internet for a while. I don't think that that was intended to, because they were making clones. <laughs> You've, you've lost that one. They were not reproducing. I think it's still there, isn't it? Isn't it still there? Oh, it's, it's still there. That's on this uh, 30 episode collection if yeah. you'd like to see that in proper My context. My son actually turned me on to that. He said, you've got to go to YouTube and, yeah. and see what they're doing to you. <laughs> um, was that what it was like in the booth? Like, metaphorically. <laughs> It was better. <laughs> <laughs> More GoBots. <laughs> that was age appropriate. Dan was just chewing me out. What age? Um, 18. Uh, well, that was for kids, but this is also uh, this is this one is a little more adult. So, but everything's bleeped. Buy a match, sir. Sir, buy the match. Apple Pie Robot is no longer under warranty. Oh, I'll just rest here a while. Man, I wish more robots smoked. <laughs> Maybe I'll like one match just to stay warm. And remember the good times. Everything seems so full of promise then. Holy crap, that's a lot of scratch. And there's more where that came from. I'll make you go by stars. Well, my name is the Joe Barbera. <laughs> wow, do you really mean it? Does Dino crap in a cave? <laughs> Barbera, and to a lesser extent, Hannah, was true to his word. We had it all. New cars, gold jewelry, <laughs> part of the Playboy Mansion. <laughs> It all led up to the day we dreamed about. So I was like, I'm the star of Transformers. Huge summer blockbuster, remember? I ain't gonna do no guest spot on According to Jim. This is bullshit. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Our oh. lunch specials today. Oh, oh, what are you guys doing here? It, it's me, Leader One, from the Challenge of the GoBots. Remember? Challenge of the GoBots? Never even heard of that. Uh, no, it was a regular show. Oh, yeah, I remember. It was that shitty ripoff of our show. But actually, our show came out before your show did, so it makes you guys the ripoffs. <laughs> All right. Yeah, how's that working out for you? Uh, well, uh, the show got canceled like 20 something years ago, but right. me personally, I'm doing great. I just. Uh, yeah, that's fascinating. Did you see our movie? How fing cool were we? Actually, no, I didn't. I, uh, we were awesome in it. Uh -huh. Yeah, no, I'm sure you were. Uh, but... Yes! <laughs> hey, you know, speaking of movies, uh, I got this uh, screenplay I wrote and some yeah. new headshots. You know, I'll, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. <laughs> What's up with those GoBots, Megatron? <laughs>
can't have your own blockbuster movie, why not make your own? <laughs> do you, do you, does anybody ever approach you guys asking about the GoBots besides us? <laughs> no. Oh, no. <laughs> 30 years. <laughs> well, maybe now that will change. Let's hope so. I think it's, it's the, could we call this the year of the GoBot? Dan? Sure, I declare it. 2014, year of the GoBots. <laughs> Write it down, people. <laughs> you heard it here first. GoBots! People ask me, hey, do you know what year it is? Yes, GoBot. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, the, the clip where Leader One is the waiter, uh -huh. that, that was from collegehumor.com. Yes. Uh, and I actually saw that. And I did, this is hilarious. And I emailed the guy and I said, come on, re record it with the real <laughs> uh, Leader yeah. One. That's and I because it's great. It's hell. It's hilarious. Yeah, yeah. Leader one is a waiter. Yeah, and he's got a script. Yeah, he, of course he's got a script. The, uh, these are shortened down from from all these versions. I tried to kind of put all three together, uh, but it's hilarious. Yeah, and it, it plays out for another few minutes. It's it's really good um, because of course that's what Leader One would be doing. And unfortunately, I identify a little heavily with Leader yeah. One of that. Yeah. So, do you want to show these guys your script? <laughs> I, I can do a PDF. I don't have to actually print it out. I'm, I'm pretty modern like that. Uh, but let's, let's just uh, talk a little about the next thing, Dan, and then maybe we'll come back for some questions. Yeah, we're going to open up the questions in just a second, but we did want to mention uh, just released is uh, Johnny Quest, the Johnny Quest, the complete 80s adventure, which uh, this gentleman to my next left, uh, he wrote the pilot episode. Uh, this was the 80s revival of Johnny Quest, which featured uh, Jeffrey Tambor in a recurring role as a rock man. And, um, and his episode has a dinosaur with bat wings, which is uh, But this is a significant year. It's the 50th anniversary of Johnny Quest, so we're hoping to keep the Johnny Quest banner alive with other stuff coming down the line and some other announcements. We've also, with the exception of the original series, which Warner Home Video put out, we have been putting out, we've been picking up the slack and getting the other the Johnny 90s. Quests out. So look us up, Johnny Quest fans. We've got a quick little video tribute, and then we'll open it up, and happy birthday, Johnny Quest. Mm. I wanted to show it. <coughs> so we can take questions, or I can show the last. Do you want to show the last video now? Questions or questions, and then the last video. We have 15 minutes. Anybody got questions? Because we might give prizes to we, people. We have special questions. things for you. Yeah, on anything, by the way. Thanks. Roman history, apparently. <laughs> um, not, not quite Roman history. Um, you, one of the things I liked about the GoBots was they did have gendered robots, and you talked about how Crasher, uh, you know, obviously was a female. She was one of the six principals. Um, how did having the gendered robots? Um, how did that make the, the fan reaction and or the development of the writing, um, how did that affect how you brought that out? Well, we, we, uh, we like to feature girls in, in major roles. So we had a, a bad female robot, a gobot, a, a good female gobot, and then we had a girl. Mm -hmm. And her name escapes me right now, but she was part of the team. So throughout that we had we had some strong female characters for the kids to, to, to go to, to relate to, and it worked out really well. It's a boyish show, but it's great if you can get the girls in there too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I want to say something. I, uh, uh, there was, there was a, a scene where Joe Barbera was stacked next to piles of money. Uh, I, I just want to say, I remember the, the premiere party for GoBots, the, the miniseries, just the oh, five man. miniseries. That premiere party, I'll never forget it because they flew us out to New York and Tonka Toys rented out a battleship. And we oh had God. them, and, and, and I remember everybody's in suits, you know, cocktails, and you're sitting down in the evening on a battleship and you're in the skyline of Manhattan is there. It's almost like a toy, almost like you can touch the Manhattan skyline. And it is the most memorable premiere party I've ever been to. And just for the record, I wasn't invited. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, nothing about it. Was Sorry, Leader One. <laughs> I was there. <laughs> Excellent question. You get a prize. It's a comment, the then I'll ask. Well, I'll go for the question first. Challenge of the GoBots and backtracking a little bit. Super Friends changed titles so many times, and I remember Challenge of the Super Friends. Was there any influence when 
between that? So it was around that same time as well? No, I can't say that it was. I mean, uh, the la I just, it was on the last two seasons of Super Friends. And you're right, they changed the titles of Galactic Guardians and the other stuff. And they just want to come out with a new toy line and a new feel for, for, for toys for the kids. Um, Challenge the GoBots just think, uh, I don't know how we came up with that title, but that's what we came up with. And the last one. It's true, the toys did fly off the shelves. I was only able to get the helicopter, the submarine, the chick, later <laughs> one, but never their home base. Did you guys ever have like at least a lot of them or how many did you were you able to get yourself? When we Thank you. first began and I wasn't in the first involved with the first five, but as the line expanded we couldn't get them from Tonka fast enough. We found uh, a hobby store in Studio City that carried the Bandai toys. Mm. We went and picked them up there for both our, our, uh, our artists to draw model sheets and for ourselves to play with <clears throat> to, to develop storylines. Um, but uh, uh, we got everything eventually from Tonka, everything in, in triplicate. Everybody got toys. And that's usually the way, the way it worked back in those days. They gift you and boxes show up and you break it open and you throw the toys around and you give them to everybody else. We were not smart enough to keep a full collection. And, and you're gonna, you would have missed out on the cafeteria menu because I, I, I looked at the close-up of that and it's like, I mean, somebody went and thought of, oh, what would a GoBot eat in the home base and there's a menu with prices. <laughs> <laughs> of course, 30 weight. focus to focus on. Well I think they told us what their primary characters were. But they you know they had more characters than uh, we featured in the show. And usually they try, you know, they just try to pile them in there, you know, and wedge them in any way you can. But they were okay with us they were okay with sacrificing some of the toy line to have a, a better story. It so. has consistent characterization, so you're coming back for the same, I mean, there are the six main ones, and then there'd be like one or two guests each episode. There'd be guest stars, mm -hmm. really. And they fulfilled their little role. Thank you, because like, for Transformers, that's what my big problem was. They would randomly introduce new characters <laughs> who are apparently always been there, which were never actually shown before. Yeah. And that was always really weird to me, and for GoPods, that didn't really happen. No, no, no. And when you guys were doing it, you, you were relatively measured in how you brought out the characters. And well, we did. We tried to establish a, a, a rule of thumb where we wouldn't introduce characters randomly. And, and when we did, we'd give them a storyline and a reason for being there because they came to a specific set of circumstances to address a, an, a specific issue or conflict in the story. Um, we didn't. We, we, we pushed back on a couple occasions where they said, you got to use this character now. And we resisted. Thank you so much. Yes, sir. Hello. Uh, I got to say, for the last panel, this was actually pretty good. <laughs> I was, I was pretty good. This was awesome. I wasn't expecting to learn so much about GoBots. Uh, you Especially, were you here for Orphan Black? What? Uh, <laughs> well, I was an 80s kid, and the problem is, being an 80s kid, you become a 90s teenager, and right, sure. knowing is one half the fight. Yeah, stuff gets in the way when you're a 90s teenager, and so memory goes away. But anyway, I had one major question, which was uh, somebody touched on it with the Venture Brothers bringing back the love of Johnny Quest and the renewed interest in Johnny Quest. With the GoBots, all we got was a quick 
robot chicken parody sketch. Yes. But there's nothing else. Would you guys be happy to let somebody just find a way to reignite interest in GoBots? Well, Dan, we're very powerful executives <laughs> at Warner Brothers. What do you think, Dan? Yeah, well, you, uh, I'd be happy if someone did that, but like, you know, we do a podcast? I, I was talking more like, you know... No, no, I mean, yes, GoBots are awesome and it would be great. Uh, you know, o over time, the, uh, the end of the great robot wars, of course, if you're familiar with your history, was that uh, one toy company bought the other, and with that came the intellectual property. But since Hanna-Barbera uh, had, we have the GoBots still uh, because Hanna-Barbera uh, had them, right? And so it, it, it becomes a sort of rights question, and somebody would have to work that out. There'd have to be demand. But we have the cartoon, but they have the toys. Yeah, so it gets complex. However, I would personally love to see it. That would be great. That would be fun. Yeah. I mean, and maybe they could fight the Transformers for once. They could be like the Red Sox, the Transformers, yeah. Yankees. <laughs> One of those WWE well, you know, I mean, the 20th century Red Sox settled <laughs> down. Thank you, guys. That was a really opening, uh, eye-opening. I just want to thank you guys for coming out. I love the GoBots a lot. So, really, this is my favorite panel of the whole WonderCon. So, I really appreciate you guys. Coming. Uh, this is the one I spent the most time on. <laughs> it's still my question, but I guess the question, the follow-up question is: When will the second thirty come out? Will that be like a year, a year and a half? No. Sometime soon. Yeah, I mean, later. like you know, this one, this one will come out, and I mean, we're they're in production now, so because. Uh, these are all done at the, like, at the lab and on, on the lot, and um, you know it's kind of fun to think that the GoBots are being handled by the A team over there, uh, maybe on the swing shift or something. But it, it uh, but you know that's got it, it, it's a, it's a long process, so that's why we're dividing them into two. But it, it one I don't think is really dependent on the other. We haven't announced the second one yet, but. Uh, and the wait, barring any unforeseen production yeah, hiccups, not, the wait shouldn't be as long as the wait has been. Absolutely, yeah. Because it's all in process now. Yeah. Yeah. You box them up and put them all in like a big, nice, shiny thing? No, it'll probably be two separate screens. Right, okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Cool. All right. Box. Yeah, thank you get, you get what GoBots you can. <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much. All right. The bad news is we only... Uh, we're the last... Uh, we're the last panel. Oh, five minutes. Uh, well, actually, actually, you guys already asked my question and follow up. So, uh, how's you, how's you guys been uh, during WonderCon? You guys have fun? <laughs> Last you guys asked my question, it's like, oh crap. Here we go. So, <laughs> what was your favorite GoBot? Uh, I was always for the good side, so Beer One was always my favorite. Uh, am I the only one who liked the bad guys? <laughs> Probably. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was a weird kid. I was like, come on, Tom, eat him. Yeah. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Now, it was we mentioned earlier about, you know, GoBots, you know, revival and license. Well, we got time for two questions, and you, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 go, Chris. Quick. Yeah. Quick. Fine, fine, fine. Uh, to Alan, do you see the GoBots as, uh, if it was revived, do you see it becoming relevant? And like it is socially relevant anytime soon, considering Transformers have you know taken up such. You know, I, I you know, um, and the Transformers. I mean, I, I've been. I saw the second Transformers movie, and that was like that. That was like I never want. I want never wanted to see a movie again. <laughs> <laughs> Just, uh, but what I, what would be fun with GoBots is that if you could bring it back with the kind of uh, technique and animation that we have today for putting out series, it just would be fun to see see them animated with more computer effects. Yeah, that, that's what I would like. I, I like the fact that it was a kids show that appealed to like the toy kids at that time. You know, like six to eleven year olds, and even you know even younger than that. So um, I would I, I I would like to see it. Yeah, it would be fun for it to come back. I mean, but so why do you think it'd be you know different? Gross, that was, we had time for two questions. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, with a lot of franchises, especially with nostalgia, uh, people are very thirsty for anything we can get that besides it was mainstream out released, like behind the scenes information or outtakes or that. Is there any, any kind of IP that anybody owns that you put out like outtakes from like um, recording sessions or even like art of that wasn't put into, like could be put into a book or a compendium? They never record the session, so you wouldn't get that. But there might be, there, there's got to be developed. Yeah, we're, we're working on trying to track down that kind of stuff to get out there for the fans to see. 
We're, we're very fan centric. It's uh, we have so many releases and we have very limited budgets, but we try to do the best we can. I mean, that's why we come out to places like this to tell the GoBot story. Oh, and I'm sorry. We we have to actually just show this one last bit of video. I'm I'm, I'm sorry to cut you off. Uh, this is for our new instant streaming service, Warner Archive Instant. Uh, you can get to it through WarnerArchive.com or instant.warnerarchive.com. It's a cult movie bonanza in 1080p uh, HD on a Roku, uh, on an iPad, and more. And when the wine. everyone here sign up for a free trial so we can come back and be at WonderCon next year. Yeah, that pays for this. <laughs> Thanks Thank everybody you. for coming. Thanks Woo! everybody for coming to WonderCon. Let's have a big hand for it. The Warner Archive Podcast is Theo and